Okay then my friends, I feel like we've learned enough of the basics of React Native now to start adding some more complex functionality and really start fleshing out the application because right now it's just a bunch of different static pages which don't really do much. So in this lesson, we're gonna start prepping the back end of this application which we'll need to implement an authentication flow and a database so that any user data can be persisted or saved. Now, I mentioned at the start of this course in the first lesson that we'll be using AppRights, which is a backend as a service to implement all of these different backend features. And that means we don't have to manually set up a server or roll an authentication system from scratch or configure and set up a database. AppRight does all of that for us and it provides us with a really easy to use API to interact with those services. So. If you've not done so already, make sure you sign up for a free account at appright.io. I'll leave the link down below the video and go and create a project here in the console. Now, I explained how to do all of that back in lesson one of this series. So if you skip past that, then definitely go back and watch it again near the end of the video. Anyway, once you have your project ready in the AppRight console, the next thing we need to do is register a platform for this backend project. Now, we've got a React Native app, so we can select that option right here. And then on the next page, I'm gonna select iOS since that's what I'm building for and what I'm testing the application on. And underneath that, we need a name for the app, which I'm gonna say is just Shelfit. After that, it's asking us for an iOS bundle ID, which is like a unique identifier for your application. You can actually add this property into the app.json file under the expo property, but we're not gonna do that yet. For the value, it normally looks something like this, a reverse domain with the app name tacked on at the end. I'm gonna use the value dev not, uh, dot net ninja dot shelfy. And once I've done that, I'm just gonna click on next. Now. On the next page, it gives us um, the install command that we need. So copy that and then hit next again. And then we'll see this setup code right here, which you could also copy into notepad or something because we'll be using that in a few minutes too. And when we carry on to the end, we're all done and we should see a slightly different dashboard now in the console. But if you scroll right down to the bottom, you're going to see that platform that we just added. And by the way, you can see all the backend services available to us through this AppRight project over here on the left. So auth, databases, cloud functions, messaging, storage, and you can click on each one of those to configure those services. We'll be using the auth and database services throughout this series for the application that we're making, so we'll come back to those later. For now though, let's go back to the code, install those AppRight packages, and also paste in that setup code snippet that we just saw a moment ago. All right then, so now what we need to do is create some kind of AppRight setup file so we can register our AppRight backend and we know how to connect to it. So the first thing we need to do is open up the terminal. I'm gonna cancel out the process and we need to paste in that install command. So I'm just gonna paste that right here. So npx expo install react native AppRight react native URL polyfill. So press enter to install that first of all. All right, so once that's installed, let's come over to the root directory and create a new folder called lib. And then inside that, we're gonna create the AppRight setup file. So call this AppRight.js. Then we're gonna paste in that setup snippet that we got from AppRight when we created that new project. And in fact, this was when we created the new platform for the project. So we import a few things here, clients, which we set up down here, account, which is what we're gonna be using to interact with the authentication service, and then also ID, which we don't need right now, so I'm gonna get rid of that. I am gonna import one more thing, which is avatars, and we might be using that service later on to add maybe an avatar to the profile. Okay, so down here, we create a new constant called client, and we set that equal to new client, where we set the project ID, which is this thing, and also the platform, which we specified ourselves as well. So it uses this to know how to connect to a specific project on the AppRight backend. Now, we also need to export this because we will be using it later on in other files. And then I'm also going to do a couple more things down here. I'm going to export const account and set that equal to a new instance of the account class. And we pass in the client that we made right here. So what this does is create a new instance of the account class, which connects to our backend using these details. And now whenever we want to interact with the authentication service, we're gonna use this thing, which we export from this file. 
I'm also going to do the same thing for the avatars service. So we'll say export const avatars and we'll set that equal to new avatars and pass in the client. All right, cool. So then my friends, now we have the project set up on the back end in AppRite and we've got the project set up on the front end. We've installed the AppRite package and we have this file now, this setup file. So AppRite knows which project to connect to. 